Hey guys, the two biggest players in the Android market are now battling also in the watch category. Samsung and Huawei are going at it and in this video we'll compare their watches. This is the Samsung Galaxy Watch versus the Huawei Watch GT. Before we start, we must acknowledge that comparing these two particular watches isn't 100% fair because the Samsung is both newer and it costs about 40% more, but we'll take that into consideration in the overall judgment. Now, with that said, let's get to it. Starting off with looks, both watches look stunning. They're also quite similar. They both have a classical feel and the Huawei feels just a little bit more like a plain old dumb watch as it has this leather-like strap. The Galaxy watch feels a bit sportier. The two buttons on the side doesn't stand out like they do on the Watch GT and one would assume that they won't hook onto stuff as easily either. The frame on the Galaxy watch is 46mm versus 45 on the Watch GT. The latter is a lot slimmer though and it builds a couple millimeters less on top of your wrist. The Galaxy watch is heavier and that will be normal given the larger size. Full color AMOLED display on both watches with customizable watch faces. I personally prefer as much information as possible on the watch face so I'm gonna switch to a digital watch with the heart rate, date, steps, calories burned, etc. Another thing you can customize is the straps, where both watches have a simple click-on mechanism for easy swapping. The strap size is universal, so you won't have any difficulties finding a new one. Both watches are equipped with touchscreens, and if you haven't had a touchscreen on your wrist before, it'll take some time to get accustomed to. A positive thing about the Watch GT is that you can customize what function the lower button does. For example, you can add a shortcut to the training session you do the most, etc. On the Galaxy Watch, you navigate primarily using the rotatable bezel, which also takes some practice. But the bezel is great if you have dirty fingers or if you're wearing gloves, it's cold outside, you know, touch screen. Moving over to the inside and all that fun smart functionalities. Both watches connect to your phone via Bluetooth. They both let you choose what apps to get notifications from and they both respond pretty quickly. Notifications on the Watch GT lets you see the heading but you have to bring your phone up to see the actual content. In great contrast, the Galaxy Watch will let you read through messages, mails and other notifications directly on the watch. MMS messages will even display with a good looking color thumbnail and you can even reply to messages using the rotatable bezel keyboard, which is pretty cool. Both watches will alert you whenever someone's calling, where the Watch GT will let you know who's calling and give you the option to reject the call. The Galaxy Watch has a built-in speaker and microphone and will therefore let you answer and have a conversation directly on your watch. The sound quality is actually impressive on both ends, but it can feel a bit weird speaking to your watch at first. Connect the Bluetooth headset for a better experience. A quite new feature, something we've only seen on a few smartwatches so far, is the eSIM, a built-in SIM card. This opens up a lot of possibilities. The most obvious one is that you don't need to have the watch hooked up with your phone at all times. That's right, you can leave your phone at home without having to worry about missing out. Stay online, receive calls and messages directly on your watch, as long as you're in cell range. Both watches have some internal storage space, but the Galaxy Watch is the only one that actually lets you store stuff of your own choice. That comes in handy for music, which brings us to the next point, Spotify. We're still only talking about the Galaxy Watch. You can use it as a remote for your phone and play music without downloading the Spotify app, but if you do download it, you'll have a full-on Spotify experience streaming music directly on your wrist. No phone needed. Access your playlists, run searches, stream via Wi-Fi or cellular, download, and best of all, listen to your offline playlists. The interface looks great and the app works perfectly. Combined with a set of wireless headphones, this feature amps up your jogging sessions even more. Just remember that streaming music will drain your battery. A lot. A cool feature is the Find My Phone function, which you will find on both watches, and it's worth a clap. Just tap Find My Phone in the menu, 
and as long as your phone is within Bluetooth range, it'll play in tune to reveal its whereabouts. Practical stuff. Naturally, smartwatches will also track your activity levels. Neither of these two can be directly compared to an all-out sports watch like the Polar Vantage or a Garmin Phoenix, but one of them isn't too far off. First, both watches are equipped with a heart rate monitor on the back, tracking your pulse from the wrist. They both also have gyro sensors for tracking movement and will give you a pretty precise step count and sleep measurement. If we go to the training menu, both watches let you choose from a list of activities. The list on the Galaxy Watch is longer. Six auto-tracked exercises and 39 total exercises, including activities like yoga, mountain climbing, rowing, and a whole lot of weightlifting exercises. The Huawei Watch GT has basic programs for running, walking, swimming, and bicycling, which will do just fine, but it doesn't cover more than that. Overall, the Galaxy Watch feels like a sports watch when you're using it for just that. It can be compared to dedicated sports watches on many areas, but it lacks sports like football, handball, golf, etc. The Huawei Watch GT, on the other hand, feels more like an activity tracker. It measures your vitals and your activity levels, but that's pretty much it. Both watches score high when it comes to battery life. The Galaxy Watch has a battery that will last about 4 days, strongly dependent on the usage, and it comes with a small wireless charging stand that will not take too long to charge, but remember, this is the only way you can charge this watch. The Watch GT has an even more impressive battery life. Huawei's estimates is 2 weeks with mixed usage, but again, this varies a lot based on the actual usage. For example, if you run the GPS, we're talking about a day or two, which is still impressive for a smartwatch, so Huawei wins this battle. If you're a Samsung person, you'll love the Galaxy Watch because it's a great extension of your Samsung smartphone. It works good with most other Android phones as well, but iPhone owners, this watch will not support calls, messaging or email. The watch looks good, it's robust, it's got a 4 day battery life and an intuitive operating system. The Huawei Watch GT loses the overall comparison battle, but taking into consideration that it costs 40% less, it does offer a lot. If you're looking to track your fitness and you don't want a plastic armband or a sports watch on your wrist, the Huawei GT delivers neat design and good measuring. A huge bonus of choosing this watch is that you don't have to worry about charging it more than a couple of times a month, as it has probably the best battery you've ever seen in a smartwatch. Which of these watches would you go for? What do you emphasize when choosing? Please tell us in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Peace out.